All right, this is battle for everyone. Ready? Yeah. Battle Emily, of Emily, do you have the link? I do. Or do yeah. you want to look? Okay, I got great. it. Yeah. Okay. All right. Battle of uh, Ender uh, is in play in three, two, one. There we um, go. Okay, George, I'm sorry to have interrupted. No, that's quite all right. Uh, now, uh, the Battle for Endor. Um, uh, oh, I love seeing that Lucasfilm Limited. That's the old, our old logo. Um, now, this film uh, features Wilfred Brimley. Are you a fan? Oh, God, I Wilford. love Wilfred. I love Wilfred Brimley. Yeah. Uh, his, he's, his work he's, is a thing. Yeah. Yeah. He's great in this. Um, I'll say when this has and, he uh, not been great, though? Are low. What's that? What's that? Make sure your volume is low. Just so it doesn't get picked up on the stream. Yeah, I can, yeah, yeah, I can hear that. I can hear the, the yeah. Uh, Watto, sorry, Watto. I turned it down. Hey, can I? I want to throw something out here. So what? This yeah. film is comes out in 1985. Yeah, um, I think so. Yeah. Right? Is that right? Yeah. I'm looking. Yeah, 1985. So. Okay, because this is a game people like to play. Wilford Brimley was 51 years old <laughs> when this film was released. Um, uh, Carl Struken, who plays the giant in Twin Peaks, uh, is in this film. Wow. Um, which is interesting because uh, David Lynch was my first choice to direct Return of the Jedi, and he turned me down to instead make Dune. Um, so it's, uh, I like noting when there's those, those interesting connections that uh, I don't know whether he saw, I know that David Lynch did, he objected to the idea of, of the Ewoks. Um, he didn't want to make an Ewok movie, but I wonder if he saw this and that's where he discovered Carl Struken. Um, maybe. Uh, do you have, maybe. Uh, do you have other memories of what, what David wanted to do if he had done Return of the Jedi? Obviously you didn't get very far in those discussions, but I've always wondered no, about that. The, the, I, I had an idea of what I thought he could bring to it visually based on what he'd done before, but I think literally his only idea about what he wanted to do was that he didn't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't, I, I don't think that, that David, uh, uh, I don't think that his thought process went much further than uh, seeing that there were Ewoks and deciding that this wasn't a good fit for him. Mm -hmm. um, I of course completely disagree. I'm looking at this now and I'm thinking, this uh, could be a David Lynch film. Um, and uh, I, I, I think he really could have brought uh, an interesting quality to um, Job of the Hutt and Wicket and uh, the whole Return of the Jedi gang. Um, but, you know, he, he follows his, uh, his muse uh, and I follow mine. So when they were making these Ewok films... How yes. how tuned out were you from Star Wars, and how were you getting into like uh, this? Is when you were working on Willow a little bit, right? Do I have that timeline yeah. right? Yeah, we were looking at uh, this was a period where uh, you know Labyrinth and Willow and Howard the Duck; these were all sort of projects in the pipeline and various uh, to stages. Expand of your empire. Yeah, we were. You know, it was a lot of fantasy, and certainly the Ewok movies were a little bit. Um, they lean more into the fantasy realm as opposed to uh, something resembling science fiction. Um, and, uh, but I was not, I was involved in these. I, I came up with a story and I did a, a fair amount of second unit directing on these. Um, so I wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't like I was uh, um, pushing these off to other people entirely. Um, mm -hmm. uh, I was invested in them and I did uh, care about them. And uh, oh, I like that rolling. That's some really good rolling they did uh, down the hill. Um, and this is very frightening. This is a very upsetting opening because uh, you have these bad guys and they're shooting and they're being very violent. And uh, uh, this, is a, this is pretty scary stuff overall. There's like a skeleton jail. I really like that. I, li I like yeah. giant bones. Yeah. I, I just, my only... I would, I could do these much better now. Uh, you can just, you can make much just more bigger and more imposing bones. Uh, if you did it through CGI, these were all practical effects, um, which were limiting, uh, obviously. Now, um, have you, have you ever spoken publicly about the use of practical effects in the, in the Disney trilogy? 
Um, I mean, I just don't understand why, you know, why they would go to all that trouble. It's like um, Trump supporting the coal industry. It's like time to move on, buddy. You know? uh, anytime. A little bit here. You know, when I visit a set and they sometimes they build these huge sets and I think, e e e why would you do all this when you yeah. could throw up a couple of green screens in a parking lot and, uh, you know, get a handful of, of uh, staff employees to come out and put on robes and gowns and walk around it in a circle and you film that, you got your movie. Right, you're like, this whole big space you're using to build all these sets, it would make a perfectly good Michael's craft store. Like, why are you taking up all this room you don't need? You just need a, a parking lot in Atlanta and you can film all of Black Panther. Now, uh, they the first movie was basically about these two kids who get separated from their parents and they spend the movie looking for them. And then at the beginning of this movie, we just immediately kill off the parents uh, graphically. That's the son is dragging the mother's body, mother's lifeless body into one of these burning huts. Uh that's uh, it's not uh this is pretty harsh stuff these are very uh 1980s child actors too like you could see them popping up in episode in an episode of growing pains or something to like sass yeah. Kirk cameron oh George, yeah, that, yeah you had them drag uh them into huts did you have the idea of that after return of the jedi because you had worked with the hut before so you figured it worked out well the first time or how did that work are you doing my job of the hut yeah yeah uh, well, no, these were these were not uh, these were huts with one T, not two T's. Yeah, yeah. you're uh, you're making Great. mistakes. There's a, the difference it, that one letter makes is uh, tremendous. Um, and the, now the, here's the father, and uh, he's in real trouble. And this guy's a tough customer. I like that, he, uh, that, that this tall guy was wearing a mask of himself that he then pulled off to reveal his face looked basically right. the same. Absolutely correct. <laughs> That's pretty good. <laughs> um, um, I will say, with the exception of the fact that we could do this better digitally, uh, and it's been again, it's been a while since I've seen it. It does seem like it might be a perfect film. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was I, mean, I was going to say in the last one really what came to mind watching these was the uh, the filmmaking of two time Academy Award winner David Lean like really these are very similar. I mean, wow, the comparison and that's, is inevitable. Yeah. And 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 that's even more flattering given the square aspect ratio to be able to invoke that. Uh, yeah. Uh, we're not even we're not even relying on that that widescreen composition. Yeah. Uh, and and this this lady is an actual witch, so this might be some of the. Uh, uh, the trouble that you had. Look, she's going to turn into a bird and fly away. Oh, definitely, um, definitely. That was that was. You know, we saw that in the, the ads, and my parents were like, "No," because then you might start worshiping Satan. So can't yeah. have that. I mean, I mean, it's hey, possible. Guys, Who knows? I also want to say we are just over a hundred dollars away from hitting sixty-nine thousand dollars. Nine, baby. So, if you want to post that link, or if you haven't donated yet, it's a good time. We want to get to that seventy-five. And and Emily, because the hours are blurring together, were you on the stream when we explained the stretch goal? Uh, I I was I was not. I've checked in most of today, but I, I didn't okay. hear that. So, so I'd love we're, to hear we're that. raising money for the uh, now unemployed former staff of the UCB Theater in New York. Yes. Uh, but earlier today, we were challenged by by friend Chris Gethard to double down and do a live stream where we watched every single episode of Arliss, 80 <laughs> episodes, which would total about 40 hours, 10 hours longer than what we're going through here. And it felt like an abstract, we can't even. And then, surprise of surprises, Robert Wool himself joined the live stream for 45 minutes. I saw some of that, I saw some of that, yeah. So we got Wool and that made us think, we have to commit to this, so it's a stretch goal. If we make $75,000, on GoFundMe, which we're now essentially $6,000 away from in the next 11 hours. Oh. We are committing to two weeks from now doing a 40 hour R-list live stream. Those are the stakes, we're essentially $6,100 $6, away. Uh, 
I don't think I'll be joining you for that one. I wasn't but. asking. I would not. I have too much respect for you. It's actually <laughs> the kindness is in not asking. I would only wish this upon my worst enemies. Uh, 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 uh <laughs> Wado, uh, I, I did want to jump back to some stuff you've said before. Like you referenced Donald Trump. You've made references to the modern political scene quite often. Do you follow American politics closely? Very closely. Very closely. With a fine tooth comb with a jeweler's loop. <laughs> very closely but you can't you can't you can't weigh in on these things anymore you know i mean this is you understand this you're in the media and there's so much mm -hmm. fake news out there i'm not accusing you of being fake news i think you're one Thank of the you. honest ones out there but there's so much fake news out there so much bad faith press that you can't really share your opinions you have to keep it to yourself because for example i lost my best friend very recently jeffrey epstein and these people are out there trying to tar and feather his reputation they just won't they just won't let it go they just they won't. won't and they didn't know him they didn't know him yeah i'm so sorry you had to go through that uh, uh, george what's your relationship with the media like um that's pretty good i mean i i uh obviously i've had uh you know critics uh have not always been uh, kind to my work uh but i think you have to you know have to have a healthy uh point of view about it you've got to take the good with the bad the bad with the good, um, but on on balance, I think I'm I think I have a pretty healthy relationship with the media. George, you don't really go out into the media much anymore, though. I feel like you've uh, no. stayed a little quiet recently. Yeah, no. Um, I gave an interview to Cinefax magazine. Mm. Yeah, you gotta you gotta give give an interview to Cinefax. Like they're at the top. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they're, they're good people. What was that interview yeah, about? George, all kinds of things: filmmaking, technology, future of film. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Wait, this this is a question that just hit me, Emily. Yes. You're talking about like Cinefax, right? Yes. Is there a publication that you grew up loving that you fantasized about one day writing for that you have not been able to either just because it hasn't happened yet or they are no longer in business. Oh. In one in your mind's eye, you're like, I will feel like I made it if I get my byline in blank. I mean, uh, uh, it was the Sioux Falls Argus leader of South Dakota and I still haven't had a byline there. So unbelievable. You know, that thing's I, a rag though, honestly. <laughs> I mean, that's, that's what I'm talking about when I say fake news. They're the number one purveyor of fake news. Absolutely, uh, and most South Dakotans would agree with you on that. Uh, but I, uh, I really love this short-lived magazine called, uh, I think, Sci-Fi Universe mm. that got me really in. That was one of the first things I got into Star Wars through. Um, it was kind of a fan magazine. It was uh, by the editor was Mark Altman, uh, and they folded long before I started my writing career. But that was kind of where I got the, the the bug for watching some of this stuff. So I would have loved to have been published there. But they also uh, wrote. Uh, they also wrote a whole cover story called 50 Things Wrong with Return of the Jedi" and five things that are right. And I'm sure you would be furious if you read it. <laughs> well, it depends, I guess it depends on what what the five things are. You know, um, they they liked the final throne room scene. Correct. And uh, they liked the uh, they liked that Billy D. Williams had more to do. Uh, Great. and, uh, they also, they also called out, uh, the Sarlacc as Freud's vagina detente, Correct. Uh, right. which I think is true. So, yes, yes. I, so okay. far it sounds like they were on point, but their These number the one thing they didn't like was the Ewoks and watching this film. I can't imagine anyone saying that. That's the, I mean, that's the problem. They hadn't spent the time. They hadn't put in the work to get all these backstories yeah. that really cracked yeah. up the characters. It and, and I also feel like, um, in the same, like, I also feel like the things that maybe people found unsatisfying about the Ewoks in the 80s are now, uh, have aged into being charming in the yeah. 21st century. That um, the elements of these, uh, uh, these films that at the time maybe were um, considered cloying, now it's hard to find that, that, that kind of brand of sweetness. Um, and uh, and it's I think it's now considered refreshing. Yeah, 
I agree. If this was on, if this just randomly showed up, I mean, the broadcast networks have nothing else to show, so maybe they will start showing this. But you know, if this just showed up on television, it would be a delight. A delight. Mm -hmm. okay. This is, and I'm hoping. I mean, this. I can't imagine a film more perfect for Disney Plus than what we're looking at right now. Yeah. Well, okay. Here's here's the. I don't know if this is a touchy question, but I read some writing by you recently talking about how you're trying to uh, sort of move out to primarily being a TV critic. Sure. Uh, but but we are in a very interesting point in time in television history yes. for many many reasons. And yes. I feel like a thing you always have written very astutely about is not just individual shows, but television as a medium and our yes. relationship with television. So we're at this point where streaming media is suddenly more valuable than ever and networks, you know, linear television is, is suddenly up against a wall because of the schedules they're used to operating on. They're going to run out of content faster. They're not going to know yes. how to fill the hours with new stuff, whereas streaming, they're just going to be able to collect more and more. Do you have any sort of predictions or any sort of feelings about what might be the aftermath that shakes out of this? What do you think will change? I mean, I think we're, we're definitely looking at a world where there might be fewer movie studios. Um, I, I think that the broadcast networks are still valuable enough that the, the major ones will still hang on. But one thing I think people aren't considering is if this quarantine lasts a long time and if people can't make television, yeah, streaming is better positioned for the, the immediate short term. But if you're looking at like next year when things open up, broadcast yep. is so much better positioned to immediately ramp up production in a way that sure. streaming is not. So like there is a world in which the long term beneficiaries end up being the broadcast networks. But if the quarantine lifts sometime this year, as I sort of expect it will, then yeah, streaming is now just in a hugely dominant position, even, you know, beyond companies like Disney that uh, own the Star Wars films. So um, one thing that I had heard from someone I talked to in the industry that I think George may be delighted by was the idea of installing green screens in the actors' homes and having them like stand in front of those green screens and act out their scenes and then, you know, putting them digitally onto the sets. I mean, this is George's dream. Yeah. So oh. like you would could just perform everything remotely. George wants yeah. to be able to just download a bunch of assets and then put the movie together later. Yeah. I mean, this is, I was, I was trying to make this happen pre pandemic. This is just, uh, uh, what I would like in any circumstance in the best of, in the best of circumstances. Uh, my fear has been that it'll look like one of those uh, 1990s uh, video, full motion video computer games, where it's mm -hmm. you know the the character walking across kind of a screen glitchily. But you know if it's if it's your fa if it's Mark Harmon and he's on the set of NCIS, you might just buy it. It might just seem real. And also, I mean, yeah. I point people to look at Attack of the Clones, which look it holds up perfectly. I mean, the thing looks flawless, glorious 1080p the highest resolution it was ever captured at. But I think, you know, George was ahead of the curve, mostly green screen sets. And he was encouraging the actors to be as socially distant as possible. Both from each other and from their characters. You see like Hayden mm -hmm. Christensen, that film is being very responsible in terms yes. of social distancing. I think look, at this, look at this bird that's happening now, this, this dragon. This is great effects work. Uh, just tremendous. Don't George is not going to like you saying that because this bird is, it's a little too practical. Well, you know, I, I, George, I know you're, you're a Ray Harryhausen fan. So I take this as an no. homage to the great Ray Harryhausen. Mm. You know, it doesn't mean the CGI isn't better. It just means Ray Harryhausen. You like to pay right. homage to him. Yes. I, yeah. I definitely uh, don't ever remember seeing anything like this on broadcast network television. No, this is unique. Hold on. Ooh. Um, yeah, this is a. Uh, this is good stuff. Some great hang gliding action. Not yeah. enough hang gliding on television now. Absolutely not. Not, not at all. Um, uh, he's dropping some rock bombs. Maybe, maybe George, maybe you can introduce me to the right people to make this happen. But I feel like there's a show 
in like a private eye who solves all his cases by hang gliding. Oh. oh. Yeah. And just yeah. Like, probably in Hawaii or something. Maybe so his name is Hang Clyde. There we go. Hang, hang Clyde. Yeah. 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 It, it definitely because uh, I think uh, I think he could have something like in the up in the air investigations or something, and he solves yeah. all his cases from above. Hang Clyde, um, private eye in the sky. Yeah. He might be kind of limited because uh, he always needs like a cliff to jump off, but uh, uh, we'll, we'll work it out. He's got to be sort of a Rocky Mountain PI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got to be. Also, also, I don't think he has to solve all of his cases. Some of them could just be him uh, refunding the money and being like, I didn't see anything. Sure. Now, I, I need think to be go to the bathroom. This is what I'm worried about. George, you seem to be fighting sleep tooth and nail I, and Tom, really I feel like you've gone down for another sneaky nap. Oh, gotten our Patrick has left us high and dry. <laughs> uh, he thinks we don't notice when he just quietly, quietly, uh, slinks away. He wants to, to just take down another quick 48 hours of continuous sleep. Oh, and, uh, Oh my gosh! Yeah, everyone, everyone knows that Patrick's getting a full night's sleep right okay. now. I'm gonna sneak off to the bathroom, but stay awake. Yeah. I will stay awake. Absolutely. I will um, keep. I will keep George awake. I promise please you. Please. Do. Yeah, now, Emily. Do you have any questions for me? Yeah, I've I've always uh, I've always wondered. You know what? Uh, what's your favorite? What's your favorite moment from all these Star Wars movies? Like, what's your favorite scene or shot or just a thing you think is great? Um. I, I like it. Uh, I like the pod races. I like it when things go fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that's just a, uh, I wanted to race cars when I was a kid. And uh, I, I just like it when you can make a scene that has the thrill of a race. So I like, you know, when you're driving, uh, driving the, the pod race vehicles or when uh, they're, you know, in a car chase up in the sky in, uh, in Coruscant, which is the planet. It's a, it's all city. And uh, Emily, the, the whole planet, is a city. I, I'm aware of this. I'm very like, I'm always enthralled by that every time. I and hear the it. whole city is a planet. Is a planet. How, is, how did they avoid just runaway climate change on that planet? Great question. Uh, George? I, I, uh, uh, what, uh, what's the thing they're talking about? Or a cap and trade. Huh. Uh, they just had an aggressive cap and trade where they would sell carbon credits uh -huh. um, and they would, and, and buy, and, and it'd just be, there'd be a, Massive offsets, um, offsets like you wouldn't believe, and that yeah. was how. And and uh, gosh, I wish I'd included more of that, but it was hard to squeeze that into the. Uh, I, I I had intended to write an explanation like that, but I, I I cut that in favor of some of the more detailed explanations of trade policy. Yeah. Sure. Now the 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 world building uh, that you put into these is just amazing. If the cap and trade that cap and trade solution makes perfect sense to me, I do yeah. want to ask you. Um, Right now, at this moment in American history, people have really turned against billionaires. You yourself yeah. are a billionaire. I want you to make a case for yourself as the one good billionaire. Um, well, most of my I, I tend to use most of my money. Uh, I give most of it away to education. And I know that there are billionaires who, uh, you know, their charitable donations are sort of a way of uh, evading taxes. Um, but I think in, in, in my case, it, it, there's, uh, a genuine element of philanthropy in terms of the way that we're building our, our museum in Los Angeles. Um, uh, I think, uh, if you ask people about me as a business person in film, I have a pretty good reputation for being, uh, generous yeah. and, uh, and, I think if I wasn't, you'd, you'd know about it. I think it's the kind of, I've dealt with enough people that um, uh, I'd have, you get a reputation pretty quickly if you, if you don't treat people right, if you don't compensate people fairly. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, that the, the, you and, and Oprah are always the two who sort of get talked about as well. You hate billionaires, but you don't hate Oprah. You don't hate George Lucas, but you, you were pointing the way toward the coronavirus all the way back in 2002 right. And Oprah was uh, elevating Dr. Oz. So I think there's a clear winner now. Yeah. 
uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, you just try your best. Obviously there are a lot of billionaires who are, uh, you know, very greedy and selfish and, and, uh, and that's a, you know, fairly common trait among people who have, you know, uh, more than they know what to do with. But I think I have a fair idea. I've always been pretty good about putting my money where my mouth is in terms of, uh, uh, trying to build something rather than just trying to hold on to fortune, you know. Now I like this little house in the woods that they're at. Yeah, it's, that's yeah. a neat little model or whatever it is. Uh, not so sure about this rabbit guy. Hey George, can um, I pop in yeah. really quick and say we are less than twenty-five dollars away from sixty-nine thousand dollars? All right, that's pretty good. It's pretty good. I want to. Yeah. I'm. I'm going to stay out until it happens because I think that's going to be a great moment for all of mm. us, for America, really. Oh yeah. I, I truly um, think here I he is, Mr. Wilford Brimley has, is, is on the scene. Say that again, Watto. I don't think I've ever smelled worse in my entire life. <laughs> Every time I get up from this chair, I get a real waft of Watto, and I'm not liking what I'm smelling. <laughs> What's the Go ahead. No, go ahead, Emily. I was going to say, what's a what's a good Watto smell like? Like, what's a what's a pleasant Watto smell? Honeysuckle. <laughs> a misty spring day. <laughs> the sound of children laughing, laughing, but not at anyone's expense. Uh, I'm and sorry, Patrick. Subtle yeah. notes of pine. <laughs> it was not important. Do not. A, a mild nutty undercurrent. We're at 98,000, I'm sorry, 68,977. Should we do some more names in order to- Yes, let's do some Star Wars Emily. names. Emily, yes. this is the thing we do in which we take the names of some people who have donated money to the GoFundMe and yeah. we turn them into Star Wars names and we make up a canon backstory for their character. Perfect. Okay, I got a good one. Hang on, let me send it in to okay, Bryson. The name is Charles Raznacki. Or no, wait, maybe it's Rass Snake? I think it's Fresnacky. Well, we'll see look, up. it's going to get changed very soon either way. There you go. So first of all, we're going to take out that A and replace it with an O. <laughs> gotcha. Choral? No, in or Resnaki. <laughs> because now his name is Charles Rasnok. <laughs> um. Let me let me ask if there's any mileage in uh, inserting a T A after the R A, an S T A. Rasta, Rasta Nook. Rasta. Charles Rasta Snoke. <laughs> okay, and then what about we add we add a T at the end of Charles? Uh, yeah, uh, maybe get rid of the E S. Shalt. <laughs> the name is Shalt Rasta Snook. <laughs> okay, now, okay. Emily, you're a writer. We've given you the name. I want you to close your eyes. And what do you picture when you hear the name Shalt Rasta Snook? <laughs> yeah. Uh, Who is Char this creature? Shalt Rasta Snook um, is. <laughs> You know the the Kyber crystals. Yes. Um, he is the the one the one man who can you know brave the deepest depths of the worst caves to find like rare specimens. Um, he's not quite Indiana Jones, but he's like in that neighborhood. Um, so he kind of feels like he's copyright infringement coming in from a different George Lucas franchise. Um, but yeah, I think that he uh, is this really great adventurer, but actually all the movies about him are just about his problems with his wife. Yeah. They're just like small scale marital dramas about like how he and his wife don't get along. And, and I think I, you know, I just, I can hear the voice of Charles Rasta Stoke in my head and someone is saying, Hey, I want these kyber crystals to put in my lightsaber. And Charles Rasta Snoke looks back at them and says, they belong in a Jedi temple. <laughs> yeah, and then he goes home and his wife is like, why weren't you home a month ago? He was, you know, he had to follow a hot lead. He said, you barely spend any time with your son, Mutt Rasta Snoke. <laughs> <laughs> He's a space griefer. 
Not Rasta Snoke. Uh oh. What's happening? The Ewoks on Wicked. fire? Yeah, Wicket's butt caught on fire. Wicked. Oh, Wicket. Furry little butt caught on fire. Guys, I have another yeah. name. Okay. Okay, let's see it. Belong to the great Angela Farragudo. Oh, the great Angela Farragudo. A lot of options here. A lot of options here. Okay. Yeah. A lot of vowels. Yes. So many vowels. Yes. Uh, Do you mind if I make a pitch? Please. Not at all. I think, we encourage I think you. get rid of the A and the N. Just skip straight to the straight to the G. Jella. Yeah. A good one. Jella, great pitch. Great pitch. I mean, Jella Gudo is a good name. Jella Gudo. Yeah. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to put Farrah, Jella, Farrah Jella Gudo. Farrah Jella Gudo. Oh, Farrah Jella Gudo. <laughs> Farrah Jella Gudo. <laughs> this is perfect. Can we see that? Can we update? Oh. Farrah Jella Gudo. I mean, it looks good. It just looks good. And it grows off the tongue. Oh, I wonder whether this isn't a recipe for something. I wonder if this isn't a, a dish. See, this is a thing. Sometimes it doesn't have to be a character. Sometimes it's a planet. It's a it's a, a, a creed. Sometimes it's a, a a piece of technology. And in this case, I think it's a dish. I think you're right. This is Farrah Gelaguto. I'll have the Farrah Gelaguto. Yes. Um, it, I think it's... I think it's uh, a spicy porridge that arrives on fire. I agree. It, they say it's it's served Ewok butt style. It's uh, it's served to you on fire, <laughs> much like Wicked's little furry tush is on fire. Um, we have another one. Daniel Stonebreaker. Mm. <laughs> Don't change it. Yeah, no, it's already a Star Wars. Yeah. Game. <laughs> First pitch, best pitch. Um, just to replace the 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 I with the Y. And and replace the O in Stonebreaker with a numeral zero. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! I don't like I don't like the zero. No. It's not Star Wars, okay, Wano. Drop the O. Drop the zero. It's clear. It was worth trying. It's worth drop trying. No bad ideas, but uh, but I agree. Um, yeah, I like it. Wait. I, mm, mm, you want to do I, one more no, thing? You know what? I'm going to do this. Yeah. Sometimes you need to paint with a jackhammer. Mm -hmm. Let's add an E. In between breaker? R and A and Breaker. No time yeah. for subtlety, Dr. Jones. Yeah. Let's not, yes, let's not be, let's not be precious about this. Daniel Stonebreaker. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. We have it. Mm -hmm. Let me pick one last one. Yeah. I uh, haven't heard who Daniel Stonebreaker is yet. Yeah, we need oh, to, yeah, oh, point. to identify the character. We need to find yeah. where is Daniel Stonebreaker. Yeah. Um, okay. He's a, where is he located? Uh, I would say he, he works in a quarry. He's a very basic. Uh, um, it's like what we saw earlier, uh, those real stones at the bottom of that mountain. Um, and he is a, he's a stone breaker, um, just like his, his father before him and his he's father before him. He's a heartbreaker. Oh, yes. That's his nickname. Yes. Yeah. In fact, let's put that in there. Daniel... Quotes, the heartbreaker, stonebreaker, <laughs> stonebreaker. But but heartbreaker is spelled B R A K K E R. Okay. <laughs> I think that's a good one. I think we have one last one to do in this batch. We have one last one. I'm gonna go for one. It's been sitting here in a while. Yes, that's the one I'm looking at. Cynthia Eschenfelder. Cynthia Eschenfelder. Okay. Um. <clears throat> and a reminder, these are, if you give to the GoFundMe link, the yes. bit.ly is over there. Uh, for the UCB staff, we may take your name, make it into a Star Wars name, give you And Star we're Wars officially now. at 69,176. We zoom past we did it. We did it. We it. Okay, Cynthia Eschenfelder. Uh, 
Um, okay, well, here's, here's I'd, like to, I'd, I'd like to start by taking the TH out of Cynthia, okay, and combining it with uh, ESCH to be the first name, and then we'll see what we have left. So it's Sin Sinich, Sinia, Sinia, TH. E S C H is the first name. Cynthia. No, no. It just starts with T. So it's. Oh, Fesh. Okay. Oh. Fesh. Fesh. And we'll see what we have left after I've burrowed that out. Bryce, are you there? He's there. Oh, he's there. I mean. There we go. That's it's too many vowels in a row. I know, yeah. but we want, there's some. We're close to something there. We need some apostrophes. Yes. What if it's? What if we take out I, I A, A E M e N, <laughs> and we put in an apostrophe? Sin apostrophe Felder. Yeah. Uh, but let's. I, I I like that. But let's put that A back in in front of the E in Felder. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> oh boy! I mean, I, I'm right at home. I already, I'm pretty sure I already own an action figure of this character. Um, Fetch Sienfelder. Oh, god damn it! <laughs> That's a good one. I'm feeling a musician. I don't oh, know. Oh, yeah. That makes do sense. Think, do we think that Thesh Sinfelder may be a jizz whaler? Is it possible? It's very hey possible. Guys, we actually, you know what? Let's hold that thought because we have another guest coming in uh, to join us, Mr. Who's Brandon it? Bird. Hello, Brandon Bird. Hello. Hello, Brandon. Hello, Brandon. How Wearing are you? Wearing your finest Harrison Ford shirt. Yep, I made this. Drew's, Drew's face, put on a shirt. Yeah. Very I mean, nice. You want to talk about the ultimate rebel at a time of social distancing? He's just running his plane into any goddamn thing. That guy, <laughs> you put him behind the wheel of a plane, he'll take it anywhere. I also saw a photo of him with a tennis racket the other day, leaving a court. I think. Yeah. Yeah. He he's like the opposite of Doc Brown. They go, "Hey Harrison, we got all these skies for you to fly in," <laughs> and he goes, "Skies." Where we're going, we don't need skies, and then crashes the plane into the ground and drives it on the highway. <laughs> Sideways. Um, I mean, I wonder if he was just hitting the tennis ball up against a wall. Maybe. Probably. He Maybe. was hitting it with the front of his plane. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, maybe he was just, he turned the propellers on and he hit the tennis ball into the propeller so it would return the serve. Maybe. It is incredibly possible. Brandon, uh, how, how are you doing? Welcome to our uh, marathon. Uh, I'm doing this space. Yeah. Yeah. yeah definitely. Most people I imagine during this thing. Now, Brandon, you're, you're a, a wonderful artist, a fine artist. Thanks, Wado. And you do a lot of work riffing on pop culture. Mm -hmm. and, and the Ewoks have been a particular muse for you. Yes, like most artists. Right, of course. I mean, I feel so bad for like the classic Renaissance artists who never even got a chance to paint an Ewok. Like Botticelli, that guy, we can't even judge how good he was or wasn't because he never painted a low gray. I, it, when they when they did the the uh, the, yeah. the digital uh, thing on the Mona Lisa, they found some Ewoks in the background there that had been painted over. It's like a magic eye painting. You have to look really closely, and you could see some Ewoks. Yeah, because a lot of times the uh, the patrons of that yeah. era who commissioned his works, yeah, they were more fans of Empire, right? <laughs> Jedi, they yeah. thought Jedi was kitty stuff. They like, <laughs> right? They were like, no. Nah. Uh, and, and you're making a great point, which is the battle between art and commerce has been going on forever. Yeah, yeah. The Medici's were the original Kevin Smith. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't have put it better myself. Now, Brandon, we've been catching a lot of flack um, because canonically, these Ewok movies take place before Return of the Jedi. That's what it says online. And I wanted to hear what your take on that was. 
I mean, as a kid, because they came out after Return of the Jedi, I just assumed they took place after Return of the Jedi. Yeah. When they came out. Uh, and there's like no reference to the Empire or anything like that. Yeah. yeah. But at the same time, if like Sindel was on Endor, like, or, or, or Noah, the Wolf of Brimley character, had been there for a while. So why didn't they run into him in Return of the Jedi? Uh, just if I can pause for one second before we answer the big questions, which seem to be so big they knocked George's camera down. I just got a message say, from a friend saying, and I quote, George has now reached Harrison Ford doing a Star Wars junket levels of apathy. <laughs> <laughs> that is the level of energy we're dealing with. The shirt could not have come at every time, Brandon. Uh, not at all. That that person didn't witness the the Star Wars naming that happened not two minutes ago. No, we were doing some fun Star Wars naming. Yes, this is great. Uh, uh, I, I'm taking off in a couple minutes here, but I do want to ask: assuming we can't choose this film, what's all of your favorite Wilfred Brimley performance? Oh, oh. Uh, I'm going to go with uh, uh, his role as the the sort of muscle for the sinister law firm in Sidney Pollock's The Firm. I'm going to go with uh, 2020 Twitter user. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's very good at it. I like him uh, as the uh, gruff, emotionally distant, but ultimately accepting father in In and Out. <laughs> I'm, uh, oh my gosh, what was the name of the movie I watched that he was in? Oh, I can't find it. Shoot. He was in some. Cocoon? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say the it's thing just out, of, just out of. Uh... Cocoon? No, Cocoon's great. There, I thought there was an old Disney movie I watched that he was in. Cocoon 2. Oh. Yeah, he's in one of those old Disney movies. I, like is, the, it, is it? Shoot. Is, it, the, is it One Magic Christmas? It would be a magic Christmas if Wilford Brimley showed up. I mean, if Wilford Brimley showed up, yeah. Hang on, right. hang on, hang on. While you're looking, I'll just say I love his work in those uh, diabetes commercials. I think mm. he's fantastic. Yeah. I'll say that. As a diabetic, I appreciate him. Yeah, he's doing good work. Wait, I can't oh, wait, wait, wait a goddamn second. Are we aware that this same year, 1985, Wilford Brimley appeared in a TV movie entitled Murder in Space. <laughs> He's second build in Murder in Space. Who is first? First build, Michael Ironside. Third build, <laughs> Martin Balsam. Murder in Space. You got to add that to the marathon. We got to add it to the marathon. It's canon. Are you sure that's not just what Battle for Endor was called and like, some foreign market. Maybe. I'll say this. I think if uh, uh, George Watto and I wanted to watch Murder in Space uh, at some point, that could happen on this stream. I mean, not Watto, continuous, yeah. but with this. Yeah. Yeah, not after this, but no. in a few weeks. Well, uh, thank you all so much for having me. I had oh. a great time. Oh. Thank, you. Thank uh, you for stopping by, Emily. Happy Star Wars Day. Uh, happy Star Wars Day to you. I hope you make your Arliss goal. I know how much you want to. We really, oh, want God. To. we really, really want to do it. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Emily. See ya. Donate, everybody. Thank you. Brandon, what's your favorite uh, Star Wars or Star Wars adjacent piece that you've done? Mm. They're all fine. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. Is there like, is there, and, and maybe your shirt is revealing the answer, but is there a Star Wars actor or character that you sort of have the most fun painting? Uh, from, I'll say Harrison Ford. You yeah. like that face? I mean, I like his face. I like his attitude of just yeah. not caring at all. Yes. Uh, you know, I think that might be a problem. That might be like why he keeps crashing is because he just doesn't care. Right. He's yeah. like, oh, if I die of this crash. I did it. I lived it. Yeah. Yeah. No skin off his back. <laughs>
Yeah, his his planner is probably like 2021. Yeah. Make fifth Indiana Jones movie or die in a plane crash. Yeah. And he's like, eh, either either's good. No. Yeah. No uh, one wants to play Sega with Harrison Ford. Someone mentioned in the comments, which is one of your paintings. Yes. It's one of my favorite paintings. And I it's, love it. it's sort of the opposite of what you're saying. It is a bunch of children playing without Harrison Ford. He's walking away sadly and dejected. Sega yeah. on their arm. I, I guess that's the one. I guess the humor in that painting is based on the concept of Harrison yeah. Ford actually caring about. Something. What if he? What if he cared right. so much? What if he cared even more than the rest of us? Yeah, yeah. Uh, you're 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 uh, creating an amusing contrast with perceived reality. Yes. yes. Yeah. Thanks, George. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. Um. Um. Yeah, no, these Ewok movies take place before Jedi. Um, when I uh, when I finished with Jedi, when we wrapped that, uh, I, I knew I wanted to make prequels, but I wasn't technolo technologically ready to make uh, the prequel trilogy. So I thought, let's just throw a couple of prequels. They, they're sequels and they're prequels. We'll just wedge them in between two of the regular movies. They're the practice prequels. They're practice prequels. That's a good way of thinking of them. And... Uh, you know, um, the life on Endor is crazy. So, you know, why we don't hear from Wilfred Brimley or the, or any of these characters uh, in Return of the Jedi, uh, there could be a lot of reasons. Uh, who knows? Uh, maybe there's a third movie that could be made that would explain exactly why uh, everything is the way it is in Jedi. Uh, maybe a witch uh, casts a spell on Wicket that makes him forget how to speak English. Hey, George, um, I'm going to break in really yeah. quick. Uh, it's 8.38. I just okay. want to let you guys know. So everyone, get your tweets ready. At Disney Plus, hashtag may detours be with you. Now, Brandon, I saw you tweeting about this. Of course, you already know about Star Wars Detours, the unreleased show. And we're asking Disney. They don't even have to release the Detours cut. Just put the episodes out. Just push a button and put them all on Disney Plus now. We need content. Yeah. Bury them in the deepest, darkest corner of Disney Plus. We'll do the you work. Can, yeah, you can hide it, so so it takes a lot of work to find the episodes. But just put them there for people to stream. Every hour on the 39th minute, we implore our viewers to tweet at Disney Plus to release the original 39. Hashtag may detours be with you. Is that oh. there are 39? There are 39, 39 episodes and people episodes. locked people. Perfect. People, these episodes are as locked as the general public is inside of our houses. Yes. We have nothing to watch. We are running out of content and Disney is hoarding 39 episodes of silly Star Wars stories. These, these episodes time, are as locked as the gates on any Mark Maron podcast. <laughs> they're, they're airtight locked. Now, yes. guys, I have a question since we're past the we're past the detours. Everyone's okay. tweeted out at this point. How much would Rise of Skywalker be improved for you personally if at the end you see Wicket and the sun looking up at the sky, camera pans over, 2020 Wilford Brimley there? Oh, no question. It, it, Would you it, think it moves up any differently? Yes. I would wonder why Wilford Brimley wasn't involved in the final battle. Yes. Sure. He yeah. might be one of those ships. Yeah, but then how um, do you get back to it? It's a good question. Well, it's a good question. it would be nice he to see. To maybe track. He's like the guy who leaves the baseball game early because he's like, I know probably my team is won, and I just want to get on the highway before it's all – Bumper the bumper. <laughs> I also think I also think there's a good chance that that question might be answered by the very physical appearance of Wilford Brimley in 2020. I think yeah. just seeing him, I don't think I don't think the way he looks is going to make one think he should have been, you know, char storming the brigades. He's probably better staying safe in his hut on Endor. He leaves Endor at the. The what? 
he leaves Endor at the end of this movie. Yes. Oh. Oh. Yeah, but I, but we're implying he probably comes back. <laughs> By the time Rise of Skywalker happens, you know, he's like, yeah, that's the place I know. I like living near trees. Uh, um. Oh wow! Look at them working together. What a stance. Brandon, have you done any uh, art during this uh, to keep you busy? Um, not really. Like, uh, first I, I mean, I don't know if it's different for you guys, but first couple of weeks I was, like, terrified and anxious uh, and, yeah. like, lost a bunch of weight. And then the past two weeks I've just been very slovenly and just doing yeah. everything and get fat again. Yeah. A lot of time for art. Yeah, cool. Listen, that's a totally okay way to do it. Um, I've been thinking about art, but then I just sort of like sit there. Yeah. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Oh. Uh, oh, boy. I'm about right. All the, about all the earth creatures on Endor in this movie and the other one. I guess anybody take that. Well, I don't fundamentally. What, what I just I reject I reject the premise. I I I I think those are just those are Endor creatures that bear a passing uh, resemblance to what we as similar creatures on Earth. Sure. Um, Correct. But uh, the people on Endor would theoretically think the same thing of almost any movie that featured animals that that was set on Earth. Okay. Um, I'm. I, I wish I could draw energy uh, from from how excited all the characters are in this movie uh, because I really am enjoying the visuals. They're so of this. excited they're running Benny Hill style. Yes. Um, uh, I'm really. I'm hitting another wall. Is what's happening. I think I maybe need to to stand up and stretch my legs for a second if that's okay. Maybe, maybe you need to eat another banana. And when, Possibly. when when George has, comes back, I have some names. So George, go okay. through your legs. Okay. All right. Now, Brandon, here's a question for you, and it's it, it's a it's a heavy question, but I think you can answer it. Shoot. Why has the handling of the Star Wars franchise been treated as if it carries life or death stakes? For the last 20 years, I would say, from 1999 on, when yeah. Star Wars also previously included things like Ewoks, the battle for Endor. I think the terrifying and probably kind of true answer is that for a lot of people, they don't really have a lot of understanding of the world. This really is kind of the biggest thing to see. You're like, at least immediately. Mm -hmm. Like like when uh, episode one was going to come out, mm -hmm. like the year leading up, that was kind of shitty for me. So I was kind of like, at least I got this thing to look forward to. At least I got this. And if it doesn't work out, you're like, what else is there? Yeah. But in this day and age, it's kind of doesn't really make any sense because, like, if you don't like the Phantom Menace, that was like it for three years, right? So you just have to like sit and stew in that. Yeah. Like, I hated Rise of Skywalker, but like literally the next day, there was like, oh, here's Mandalorian. Right. Yeah. You go, this is the one I want. I don't have to order everything on the menu. I don't have to like everything on the menu. So it's like, what, what's there to complain about? The next day, there's like a brand new thing to like. Yeah. yeah. So I don't really know what the deal is with those goobers who like are. Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, no, so much Star Wars. Come on. Right. I, I, I kind of wish that in some ways that that's one of the reasons why I sort of wish that the Ewok movies were more popular is because um, they uh, the stakes for whether or not you like or dislike a Star Wars movie uh, yeah. are lowered somewhat if you have a wide selection. And the right. it feels like these movies are are uh, fun and weird in a way that feels um, 
uh, maybe less uh, important than right. the regular episodes, which sort of have this uh, uh, veneer of, of um, you know, this is the definitive tale of this saga, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, in the 80s, George Lucas, I'm, excuse me, you. Yeah. We're just kind of like, eh, I don't really want to make more, but kind of keep the wheels on the Enterprise going a little bit. Right. What else? Can, okay, TV movie. Yeah, we can do that. All right. That'll yeah. sell some Ewok stuff. I'll keep it going. Yeah. It, it felt less precious. And I think, you know, George, you and I have talked about this. The we fact have. that the, the second piece of filmed Star Wars content that ever existed was the holiday special. <laughs> should, should be something that we use to keep all of this in perspective. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, when that's the second thing, you, you know, you no longer have a shot at a perfect record. Right. You know, it's, you're no longer suddenly become so wide. Yeah. Yes. It's wild. What a it's weird wild. thing you created, George. <laughs> I don't think it would have become this big of a fucking deal. You know, I like it. I'm a big fan. It certainly paid right. my mortgage. But Jesus Christ, you know. I like my favorite thing about George Lucas is I mean, how he oscillates between caring a lot about Star Wars and just not giving a fuck. That's my George. That's him yeah. right there. Look at yeah. that. Yes. Right. Oh, I mean, I need to make. I mean, a billion Clone Wars episodes. Actually, but I don't know. Maybe I don't care. I don't know. I just want to make art yeah. films for my friends. I mean, here's the thing. We are now almost, uh, what, 20 hours into the Star Wars saga. Yeah. And we've arrived at a place where I believe a little girl has a put a witch in prison. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. That's where, that's where we are in the story. So it's yeah. like, how upset, how upset do you want to be? Right. How upset do you want to be at the story? At, at hour 20 of Star Wars, a little girl has put a witch in prison. Yes. And we still have four movies to go. <laughs> and yes, and it's like, uh, you know, you can be mad or you can not be mad, but one of the things that happens in Star Wars is a little girl puts a witch in prison. And, and Wilford Brimley puts a stick in the river. <laughs> he, he just puts a stick and he waves it around a little bit in like a moat. Yeah. Um, He's got a grappling gun. <laughs> <laughs> he uses it to scan um, the castle wall. I mean, come on, people. There are, I think there are two points. Honestly, there are two the points phrase, I want to make very quick. Yeah. One, yes. everything that's happening on screen is fucking <laughs> awesome. Especially this sped up footage of the creatures scaling the castle wall. It rules. <laughs> and if you don't like it, your taste is bad. Okay, that's fact one. Right. Empirically, yeah. if you do not like this, your taste is bad. Fact two. Yeah, I mean, calm down. You know, this is just, look at what's happening here. I mean, objectively. <laughs> George, do you like Teak? What's your take on Teak? That guy. Teak's a good guy. He's he's fast. I like that. Yeah. You know I like it when things go fast, and, and Teak good. goes fast. Teak goes fast. Um, I tell you what, the sentence, the the elegant sentence that you you just uttered, uh, Watto, uh, Wilford Brimley puts his stick in the river. Yes. Uh, yeah. That sounds almost like a, a Zen Cohen or so. It's, it, it sounds like something. Uh, uh, almost a haiku or something. And we should all find peace and solace within it. It should not be a point of contention. And Wilford Brimley puts his stick in the river. <laughs> Anytime, uh, that, if we can give any comfort to people who are out there, maybe just give them that sentence. If you take anything away from what we've done here today, right. write this sentence down, and when you're feeling like you... Uh, aren't in control or you're panicked or you're sad or nervous or any kind of negative emotion that you want to feel you have some sort of leverage over, look at the sentence and say it out loud. Write it down on and a piece of paper. Tape it to yeah. your wall so in your darkest moments you can visually look at it. Yeah, you can look at it and say, and Wilford Brimley puts his stick in the river. <laughs> and he wiggles it around a little bit. You don't have to write that. But just keep that in the back of your mind. Just, just know that he does. So, uh, Brandon, this is a thing we've been doing. Of course, we are raising money for the former employees of the UCB Theater in New York, which is now closed down. People have lost their jobs, their insurance. They've lost a lot. Yep. 
they've lost a little bit of a future. So we're trying to help them out here. So we're raising money. There's the GoFundMe link, which is hopefully flashing on the screen. But guys, guys, we are almost at 69.5 thousand right now. Wow. 69, dollars so, When you guys huh? donate, it goes up by a lot really fast. It goes up. So this is what we're doing. We're trying to do this more and more regularly. We take the names of some of the people who have donated and we turn them into Star Wars names and make up a little backstory. Let me let me give one. And it was for uh, a guy who also made a video online. Yes, I saw this. Okay, good. I'm glad we're, we're getting yeah. it. What is was this, the video? Is, uh, it was about it was about it was the earlier exclusive that in the film the Empire no in a new hope uh, uh, Obi-wan Kenobi does not die when his robes fall to the ground he actually just shrinks down to be teeny tiny he's the size of a bug and then he's naked and he's trying to stop the bad guys at the little tiny bug size but he gets distracted by all the sexy bugs so he's having the intercourse with all the bugs and he's so distracted that he doesn't manage to get off the Death Star before Luke blows it up. So. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, and because it does really explain uh, when Vader does his little stomp on the cloak yeah. and it's not very thorough, but it right. implies like that something's possible there. He that thinks he, could he be under be crushing because he knows this, this Obi-Wan, he likes to get teensy-weensy and also very <laughs> naked. But it also explains the fact that uh, Obi Wan, when he's in the the sword fight, he looks over at Luke and then he kind of smiles and he looks back at at Darth Vader <laughs> yeah. and then Darth and then he puts the thing up like that and Darth Vader goes to hit him and right before he hits him, it's just like this is what I'm a tiny he's one. Essentially, he's about to pull a party trick. That's what he's yeah. doing. So this anyway, is, all yeah. of that is canon, and this donor also made the video earlier. Yeah, his name's okay. Ryan Dwyer. Ryan Dwyer. Okay, let's look at that. Ryan right. Dwyer. It, can it be Anne Rye? Anne, Anne Rye? Rye? Like, no, no, like A N R Y. No, I know, I know. Let's see what that looks like. Let's flip those two, those two syllables. Anne Rye. Bryson, thank you. Um, got a lot of Y's in this. Yeah. Why? I'm wondering, usually we take other letters and replace them with Y. But now I'm wondering, do we need to take some of these Ys out? And if so, what's cooler than a Y? Now, do you think Anne Rye sounds too much like Anne Rand? I'm a little worried about that. I'm also worried let's it put, sounds like a toddler trying to pronounce angry. Yeah. Let's put the yeah, W in front. Let's put the W in front of Anne Wanry. Or Wanry. Henry. How about I'm probably missing some letters, but you're one dry. You're you're one dry. Yeah, that's that's mine. Well, yeah. I got I want to let me just see what something looks like. Right. What happens if we place D Y E first and then we take that R and we place it in between the W and the A? All right, let's see. It's all about it's saying it out loud and it's also seeing what it looks like. That's pretty good. I ran. I ran. I don't know. It's I close. I ran. Re. What, I ran was, re. what was your pit, Brandon? What were you suggesting? Die. <clears throat> Let's make this. There's like one more R than I want. We could we just drop it. an R. We don't have to use every part of the buff. Then die, then a hyphen, then Juan, like Obi-Wan. Yeah. And then the <laughs> hyphen is R-Y. Die. Yeah. <laughs> so drop the first R. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. yeah. That's it. Wow. No, no, no. Think? He's got to drop the first R in Ron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. If he uses all the letters, perfect. Die, Ron, Ron. There we go. Hey, bring it back, Bryson. What are you doing? Yeah, Bryson's, bring Bryson's bringing it back. Bryson's bringing it back. I, Thank you. Wow. Now, what do we think? Who do we think this guy is? I think he does. He's like a. He works at a laundromat. I think so too. <laughs> I was thinking yeah. this guy is a master of knowing how to not die 
your white with with your colored items of clothing. Yep. What planet? Uh, the laundromat's probably on that same street as Dex's Diner. Absolutely. Or, or so that, Brandon, yeah. I don't know if you know this. I don't know if you know this. Whole city's a planet, and whole planet's a city. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure you knew that. I just want to make media sure. doesn't want you to know this. Clearly, you've been activated. You're not one of the sheeples. You've woken up. <laughs> you've done the work. But a lot of people don't know that the whole planet is a city. And yeah. then Patrick also posits that that means that the city is a planet, which I don't think tracks the same way. You don't know that that planet has a stick in the river. You don't know that that planet has a core. It could just be buildings all the way down. It could be. Bring you around to my side. Let's let's try another donor name. Yeah. Um, have a have a land cardinal. Oh, this one. This is already a meal. Oh, where do I dig in? I'm at, I'm at the royal buffet. What do I even? Where do I start here? Have a land cardinal. That's already like a Star Wars. You just have to put yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, it almost feels like you just reverse the words. You reverse the words and you have it. Cardinal it might be Cardinal Havilland. <laughs> that sounds like a Three Musketeers character. Well, well, okay, here's what I'm saying. Okay, so it's Cardinal is the rank, right? Havilland is the last name. We have to come up with a new first name. Mm. So Cardinal Blank Haviland. Um, wait, we have to fully come up with a name, or we can we can pick. Wait, from what about have, what about Haviland? Like H A V I L A N D. Cardinal Haviland. Yeah, it's a it's a okay. Here we go. You ready? It's a, a someone who works for the church, but they also like buy up a lot of property. That's a very George name. That's a very George name. This or it could be. He or could land. Be. Hang he's on. a land. He's a Hear landowning cleric. Hear me out, Cardinal. Yeah. I have land. It's a fine line, and you're walking right up to it. Oh, excuse me. Isn't there a guy named I'm a gonna die in the prequels? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's the level of subtlety we're we're aiming for here. Elon sleeves Bagano. There's still some mystery. You don't know everything about these guys. <laughs> Elon sleeves Bagano. Oh. What are you thinking, Brandon? I see you doing the math in your head right now. I think there'd be a few more plots. Okay, let's okay. try it. It would be like Nalcard Haviland or Nalcard Landahad. <laughs> Let's see what now card looks like. Now card. Change it. What about now card? Land it. Okay, wait. This is. I might be crazy here, but I want to try this. Water, you're crazy, man. Take the second word and just literally reverse it. Every letter, T N A L V A H I, in that order. Just flip it, baby. Flip it. D N A L V A. See that, but that here's the thing. That looks like a fake name now. I agree. It really does. I was very wrong here. This I was off base. I'm losing my mind at this point. I thought I was going to blow everyone away with that flip. And it's, I really, I'm eating crow over here. You're oh. gonna, Patrick is saying flip it back. Yeah. Oh. How about George, what's going on, man? Lava hand. Can you do that lava hand? Lava, lava hand. Yep. We're back on it. <laughs> now card lava hand. <laughs> um. I think I, I I think we should change the N to an M. Malcard Lava Hand? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, that's our final. But then I yeah. think we're perfect, right? Malcard Lava Hand. Thank you, Haviland Cardinal, so much. Thank you so much. <laughs>
<laughs> it was tough. Your name, it was too close. We had to go further away. Okay, yeah. we got we got one last. Oh, wait, do we want it with the job? Oh, no, um, one of those wall scoopers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's cleaning up after uh, Obi-Wan and Anakin's mess. These kids and they're fighting. Like a vault. Uh, okay, last one is going to be Matthew Nixon. Okay. Mm. Zombie? Um, Zombie? Let's see what Zombie uh, looks like. Let's. I'd like to pull out a, a th and an am from the from Matthew as you a first word. You don't want to pull the th and the x, George? No. Okay. No, no. I I, I see what you're saying. Um, he would never dare. Uh. No, no. I was saying the t h a m. Oh, two mixing. Yeah, put Sam in front of it. We're less than four hundred. We're almost three hundred and fifty dollars away from seventy thousand dollars. Oh my God, seventy thousand dollars! And Brandon, do you know the stakes here? Oh, <laughs> the stakes. Or the, <laughs> the stakes. We have about ten hours left in this live stream. Is that right? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe, yes. Less. Uh, yeah. 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 Around that. Nine. Nine hours. Nine and change. Hey guys, we have another guest. Uh, I think Bryson's gonna bring him in. Jamel Bowie from the New York Times. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So Hello we're there. explaining the stakes here. This is Brandon Bird, fine artist. We're explaining the stakes. Right now we are up to $69,637 for the laid off former employees of the UCB Theater in New York. If we make it to 75,000, before oh, God. 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow morning, then we are committed to a fortnight from now doing a 40 hour live stream of every episode of Arliss. Of course, the next live stream subject for George Lucas and Watto is the entire run, all 80 episodes of Arliss, 10 hours longer. And with guest appearances. Wool. Wool is on board. He's committed. We got him to make an appearance on this. He dropped in. He said he wouldn't be able to stay long. He did 45 minutes. We couldn't shut him up. Michael Boatman, the great Michael Boatman. We think we have an in. And where there's a oh. boat and there's a wool, there better be an O. So we're going <laughs> to unite the three from our list and do a 40-hour goddamn our list live stream. So we hey, are oh, going to make $5,000. In the next nine hours, and we're committing ourselves to a 40 hour hourless live stream. I, I don't want to do it. Guys, I don't want to do it. Hang on. I'm so sorry, Jamel. Thank you so much for being here. But I need to say if we're the ones who facilitate the hourless reunion yes. during the quarantine, yes, so much, so much uh, uh, press will get written up about that. Yes, did you not disappear? <laughs> He's gone. Did we lose? Did Jamel refuse I, to remain in this I conversation? Think, I think you drove him away with your detailed description of the Arliss reunion. Boy, I came in too hot with the Arliss. Huh? <laughs> right, said he lost him. Hopefully, he'll be back. Okay. He, but now, uh, I think Brandon, now you understand the stakes. I mean, this is uh, life and death. I I sort of get it. What I get is whether you're trying to meet that goal or prevent that goal. Okay, here's what happened. Our friend Chris Gethard dared us to do an artless live stream. We said, I don't think we can take it. Then we said, let's see if we could get Robert Wool on board. If Wool wanted to do it, then maybe we'd consider it. Then Wool Zoom bombed us <laughs> for 45 minutes. And at that point we said, I guess, I guess now it feels like we've made our bed. We have to make good on this. Let's set a goal that feels unachievable. 75,000. I don't think we hit it. And now we're getting dangerously close. <laughs> little column A, little column B. It's a little bit of both. Money going I, to a good cause. We don't even know what the good cause is yet. When I say the stakes are life and death, what I mean is George and I might not survive another live stream. I mean, there's nothing to say you can't take an eight-hour nap in the middle of the live stream, right? 
Well, we, we're taking a fortnight. We would take two weeks off before we even attempted the R list live stream. But then you the have question to take is more days off work. Would R list be uninterrupted? Or would there be a nap time for R list? <laughs> Isn't that the season two finale name? Nap time for R list. <laughs> I would love it if. Oh, is Jamel back? Is Jamel yes. back. Yes. Now, yeah. Don't drive him away with more of that Arliss talk. I'm gonna be very chill. <laughs> I'm gonna be very chill. I'm not gonna talk about Arliss. I think you, when when a when a guest comes into yeah. uh, a 30 hour Star Wars marathon and is immediately bombarded with the details of an upcoming Arliss marathon, he, the only rational response is to assume you are in the wrong place and to back <laughs> out of the room. Absolutely. Okay, so all of us, we have to play this real cool. Okay? <laughs> Everything about what happened before was like walking into the wrong classroom and immediately being like, "Oh, sorry, wrong room." Oh. Right. Oh. I, You're looking. I'm going to have to drop out again. Are speaking right. Right. What if yeah. you my camera, camera for like oh. isn't working? Oh, Jamel is there, but the camera's not working. <laughs> so let me. Oh. I'll, I'll be right back. Okay. okay great. Right. Yeah, he's looking to see if he has five thousand dollars to just. He oh, might we want to, to put up or shut up. Have we finished Matthew Mixon? I think. Um, oh, no. Sam 2 Mixon. I think it's Sam 2's on me. I think so, too. X-O-N-M-I. Yeah. yeah. Put the me at the end of Zon. Yeah, yeah that, that, and that's that's also very lucas like because it sounds like a sentence. Like, them two's on me. Yeah. <laughs> it was them two. Them two's on me. <laughs> Dying to see what Zotmi uh, looks like. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. No, NNM. N -N NMI. Not the Zomni. <laughs> Zomni. Uh, yeah. yeah. That I like. That I, I like. like that. I like that. That I like. All right. The Ewoks are building a device, <laughs> With a, a gadget. Yeah. They're building a catapult that actually looks more advanced than anything they build in Return of the Jedi. I think almost everything in these Ewok movies looks more advanced than Return of the Jedi. Like this environment that Wolford Brimley in is in looks very yeah. uh, I don't know, nineteen eighty five. Well that's that's evidence for them being set after. No, but but the prequels look more advanced than uh, a new hope. But Wolford Brimley puts his stick in the river. You would think that Ewok society would go up mm. after the Empire. Oh boy, I like the villain in this a lot. I think he's real creepy. I do too. I do feel like I'm going to watch both these movies this week at full volume, though, because I don't really know what's going I on. I feel the same way, and God, it is crazy to think that I will be watching these I two know. films again within this calendar week. But they got me. They I'm got feeling me. I'm feeling that they're, lack. They're they're really uh they're they're really something. They're really something special. Yeah. Yeah. The Ewoks plant should not have all those electric uh me meters or whatever those are. Does that mean they have power plants? Yeah. Okay. What what do you guys think Sindel's up to right now? Who? Sindel in real life. Oh. The actress? Oh, no. yeah. I hope she's doing well. Oh, in the in the character. Yeah, let's look it up. Look it Not up. Fast. Look at look him go. Look at him go. Look at him go. Jamel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Super fast. Hey, Jamel, sorry Jamel, about earlier. Hello. We're actually very cool and very chill and we don't talk about our list at all. <laughs> so don't worry. I was gonna say I, I don't think I've ever even heard of Arliss. So this was all I was about to ask. Like I, well, I, I got I had no idea what you're talking about. Don't ask. It's not a big deal. We're very cool. We're very chill. Um, uh, uh, Jamel, we're currently uh, we're currently about an hour and nineteen minutes into uh, the the second Ewok movie, the Battle for Endor. Um, the battle is happening right now. It's we're in the middle of it, and the Ewoks are doing quite well. Um, one of the Ewoks, I think, just killed someone, and then another person. It looks like killing a lot of people. Yes. 
sounds pretty typical of the Ewoks. They they are uh, they are pure bloodthirsty based on their depictions. They are murder yeah. a lot, yes. Um, but very lovable. And they have little furry butts. Of oh, course, those are the, right, right, those are right. those are the, the same an, those are the same animals from uh, the Mandalorian, the ones that uh, Nick Nolte, uh, yeah, Blurgs. And and do you know that actually Nick Nolte, the actor, has one of these in his backyard? That was part of his payment for being in the Mandalorian. Hmm. He's got a live one running about. Mm -hmm. Come back here, yeah, yeah. Come on. Wado, that's a good impression. Thank you. I've been wow, working on all Everyone's got to have a Nolte in their back pocket. If you want to make it in show business, you got to have a back pocket Nolte. Jamel, how's your night going? Uh, it's going well. It's going good. Sorry, I've never seen this movie before, and so I'm like legitimately fascinated by it. I'm yeah. like looking over I at mean, it. This, this movie and, is uh, very much canon, and if you're concerned and, uh, by the movie, Jamel, I just want you to remember one thing. Wilford Brimley puts his stick in the river. There is a scene in which Wilford Brimley takes a stick and he puts it in the river, and it's a very calming image to mm -hmm. have in your head. <laughs> um, I would like to, uh, Jamal, I'd like to apologize for how uh, out of it I, I am from moment to moment. I have moments where I become lucid and then moments where I, I completely disconnect because I'm so exhausted. I'm so very exhausted. And, and we've still got a very yeah, long, how, how long to go. is So you guys are like 20 hours into this now. Correct. We're, we're over 20 hours into this, and, and we started doing uh, prep about an hour or two before, so we really have been in this uh, for a long time. But the good news we is we only have four movies left to watch after this. That is the good news. What are, what are, what are, what are the four? Are, there, are oh, we're, the, um, we're going to finish the off, movies then? No, we're going to finish off the Ewok trilogy. So we watched... Caravan of Courage, we're finishing Battle for Endor, and then, of course, canonically, the, the Ewok trilogy ends with Return of the Jedi. And then we have not come up with a name for the final trilogy yet, but we are watching that final. Uh, I thought we were calling it the Mouse Trilogy. The Mouse yeah. Trilogy. Yes. The House of Mouse Trilogy. Guys, a we, lot are of good now, we are now just over two hundred dollars away from making it to seventy thousand. Wow! Oh. Wow! 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 This is a little bit scary. I got to admit, it's a little bit scary. I'm We're not going to talk so about unhappy. this. So unhappy. I, so unhappy. I but remember, stay cool. Jamel is here. Let's not talk about our list. Uh, I want to be clear that once the marathon ends. If if the tally goes up after that, it doesn't make we don't have to do the R list. No, absolutely not. And here's another promise: even if we hit seventy five thousand in time, you're not going to see or hear from George Lucas and Watto for two full weeks. Don't add us; we will not respond. Uh, if you add me, I'll probably respond. I'm around. Well, yeah, because you've been napping all the day. Uh, Oh my goodness! Um, oh, what's what he said? Uh, Andy Blandy throwing some shade. Um, we're all watching the Ewok movie right now, and it's very peaceful. There's a lot of good scurrying about the woods. Um, we oh, we lost Jamil again. I take it personally every time. We're talking about seventy-five thousand. As soon as we bring up that seventy-five thousand, he doesn't bring like up that stretch number. Goal. That's a that's a magic number for him. He doesn't like it. He doesn't like the stretch goal. Um. Uh. <sighs> Let's look at the live comments. Let's maybe try to answer some questions. Let's try to answer some questions. People throw us some questions. Questions for us. Questions for. Brandon, it looks like George's eyes hurt. 
Hey guys, as soon as we hit the next thousand, we will do some more. We'll do another round of names. Okay. It is true. Someone pointed this out. George, the redder you get, the paler I get. George I'm starting George. to phase in with my wall, and George is starting to match the color of his jacket. George, bring BB-8 back up. Bring BB-8 back up. When you said that, the redder you get, the paler I get. I'm for some reason I imagined it to the tune of that song. Uh, wherever you are, whatever you do, I will be right here waiting for you. The redder the, you the, get, the paler. The paler I get. I get. I will be right here waiting for you. So, George, can you grab BB-8 and then Bryson? Can you find that cartoon that the person drew of Connor of uh, George blowing up BB-8? Oh yes, please. It's not a cartoon, it is fan art. And it's lovely. George spent a solid 15 minutes on uh, while Ben Schwartz was here, not interviewing him, instead blowing up a uh, Party City BB-8. All Ben did was razz me and make fun of me. So, yeah. And I had this as a tribute to him. And the whole time I was doing it, everyone said, stop blowing up BB-8. There we go. <laughs> and, and and now multiple times I've been asked to to show off this inflatable BB-8. Yes. And check out that response to that tweet. What tweet? Look, look at that response down there. Holy shit! From? from Patrick Cotner. I don't know. Not that great. Four out of ten. The response. Yeah. It was in the moment. I was excited. You went blue oh. quickly. Oh, wow. You went, you went, went Well, wait. You it, went. It's, it's the singer, not the song. That's all I'm going to Patrick, say. No, Bowie, in fact, everyone be cool. No Arliss, <laughs> no 75. Everyone stay cool. Everyone stay cool. Okay. I, I apologize. Patrick, my my Wi-Fi has been uh, acting up, so hopefully it works now. Yeah, no, that's my what the Wi-Fi. Oh, no, George made the joke. I was gone. Gone. <laughs> they all claim they got faulty Wi-Fi. Patrick, you went blue quicker than I went red. <laughs> Guys, we are less than $150 away from $70,000. do not Patrick, don't. Guys, at this point, I sort of want it. It'll, are you going to do it too? Probably. Must be nice. Must be nice to... Have the choice. I got a lot of occasions. Um, <laughs> let's, um, let's look at what's happening here on screen. There yeah, I, look, I looked over Wicked, and it looked like... A, we could hit that guy in the heart. Right. It's He's like got a team heart. from Avengers Endgame. I thought it was like a, like a... Something from... It looked like I have something from Planet of the Apes. Yes. And we'll Look at him. He's, oh, look at this. This is a good... This is a better villain death than Emperor Palpatine and Jedi. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, you're not wrong, George. This guy's actually... Because this guy's actually like realizing that he screwed up. Yes, he's having a moment he's like, of clarity. Palpatine whined the whole way down. And look, that bird witch is freaking out. Yeah. And this guy is like, oh, no. Look the choices that. I have made. And that bird witch is flying away like, I'm getting the heck out of here. And, and the Ewoks are like... That's right. You don't mess with us. We're going to leave this guy in the middle of our village like a statue. So it was I, like, I'm going to go right up to him. I, I noticed there was a, a child. It was a child mm -hmm. involved in this battle. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the, the, she is nominally our hero. Yeah. yeah. Her entire um, family died earlier in the movie. Just, oh. Yeah. Really? The first movie was the first movie was about basically her rescuing her family, and the second movie, her, the rest of her family dies anyway. <laughs> it's a real that honestly, I have to say that might be the most sort of like George R. R. Martin sort of move in the Star Wars saga to have a victory immediately negated by uh, uh, the the loss that the victory was preventing. Yes, heartbreaking. 
are breaking, but now she can be a child soldier. So all's well that ends well, really. Well, you say that, Jamel, but kind of telling that she's given such a, a sort of emotional survival at the end of this film. Nowhere to be seen in Return of the Jedi. Don't know what happened there. They, they leave. Did they leave? Yeah. I have not seen this movie in so long, Brandon. Yeah, she goes off with uh, Wilford. Wilford Brimley. Wilford. I take off in your spaceship. Oh, boy. I'm sorry if I spoiled it. No, no, I mean, we made it this far. There's no, there's no spoiling these movies. They're too good. Oh, you man. Can't spoil perfection. It's like, how, how do you spoil a rainbow? How do you spoil the love of a child? By killing her entire family in the first act? How do you spoil the song of your heart? Oh, boy. God, she's, she's really, she's crying one out with these Ewoks. Yeah. Oh. Now, Jamel, I have to ask, did you know that these films existed previously? I, I did. I, I knew they existed. Yes. Uh, uh, mostly because um, I knew that Wilford Brimley was in one of them, and okay. I, I, this one. But uh, at no point in my life have I ever had an opportunity to watch them and I've obviously never sought it out. What did, in your mind's eye, what did you imagine them to be? I, I have no idea. Uh, uh, I guess this. <laughs> this actually looks a little better than I thought it might. It looks pretty good. It my was brain, good. Yeah. It, w it was much more low budget. Yeah, no, these are good. These are good. And it was, you know, released theatrically in Europe. I mean, that doesn't really count. I, I look. I agree with that. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think it can. It makes being released released theatrically in Europe doesn't just make them theatrical films. It makes them cinema. I'm realizing this. This ending is kind of a reverse ET. It's the human gets in the ship, and all the Ewoks sadly wave, and triumphant music as the human flies away. It's also like the most wooden looking spaceship we've seen so far in Star Wars. Yeah, you hate that. George hates when you can tell that elements in front of the camera were made out of real materials. If you, if you sense natural light hitting an object, George, he wants to puke. He loves That's cute. Right. They're friends. They're friends. That's cute. And <laughs> and there we go. That was the battle for Endor. Wow. All righty. And it truly was. It truly yeah. was a battle for Endor. It truly so this, was. And, and we're only two movies into the Ewok trilogy. We now have the, the stunning conclusion of the Ewok trilogy. We get to close out the Ewok trilogy. So what's the conclusion of the Ewok trilogy? Return of, Return the, Jedi. of the Jedi. Oh, okay. Most people think about that as the conclusion of the original trilogy. No, no, Wait. no, my friend. It is, in fact, the conclusion of the Ewok trilogy. And... And there are elements, whether you place the Ewok movies after Return of the Jedi or before, there are elements that are impossible to reconcile. Yes. You are, there are elements of, there are degrees of bafflement in either direction. Say more about this. Like, what kind of elements are impossible to reconcile? Like, are people well, dead that should be alive, alive that should be dead? There appear to be some resources and inhabitants of Endor that there's no sign that they were ever there when the humans show up in Return of the Jedi. Even there's also the fact that Wicket, the Ewok, speaks English in the battle for Endor, and he doesn't in Caravan of Courage or Return of the Jedi. Yeah. There's um, also the fact that the Ewoks treat the humans like things they've never seen before yeah. and want to eat in Jedi. Yeah. Yeah. Like they're in both stories, which yeah. are by the Ewok movies, they're meeting humans for the first time. 
Yeah. It's kind of, and it's the same main Ewok meeting humans for the first time. So Maybe Ewoks don't have short-term memory? Ooh, that would explain it. I think it's more like how, you know, classic tales like King Arthur, Robin Hood, there's lots of different versions of the same myth. And that's what the Ewoks are. And they're ah. in different ways with different details throughout time. That makes sense. Yeah. So is this is this so the Ewoks are in a myth? Because I, I you can also think of it as amongst the Ewoks, they have a myth of meeting human like creatures. And so they're simply retelling this again and again. Uh, hence the similarity in details, but also the strange omissions uh, in them. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe all of Star Wars is just a story of the Ewoks. It's That's possible. possible. That's what I'm going to choose to believe from here on. That's a comforting thing. It's a comforting thought that these are just stories <clears throat> told by little teddy bears to each other. Uh, and was now was Tarek was the main bad guy, the one who got turned into stone? Yeah. Uh, that's Carl Strykin, who's the the giant in Twin Peaks, I believe. Even Men in Black, Star Trek: The Next Generation. That's right. That's right. Adam's Family. Uh, Adam's Family yeah. movies. Even He's a tall fellow. Yep. And here we are. We've reached we've reached the very end of the end credits, and now for the remaining four films, we'll be back. Comfortably in the in the welcome embrace of um, Disney Plus, um, with its pleasing interface, um, and reasonable monthly rate. We made it through the most treacherous part of the marathon, which is getting to these movies that are harder to find in a legitimate way. And it seemed like it worked. It seemed like it worked. Uh, it seemed like people were, people were watching along. Oh, this definitely feels like we're turning a corner into clearer sailing now that we stay in the safe waters of Disney Plus. Now, there is one tricky element to Disney Plus, Jamel. Which is? I feel like you've been writing a lot, very intelligently, about you know the, the sort of deeper evils, the game beneath the game with the COVID-19 crisis in terms of the lack of proper care in our, in our society, infrastructural care for those in need, the stockpiling of resources and wealth by the haves to the exclusion of the have not. And there is no greater injustice along these lines than Disney's refusal to release the 39 original episodes of Star Wars Detours. Disney, when they bought Lucasfilm, inherited 39 completely finished episodes of television. A full TV series, an animated show called Star Wars Detours that was Star Wars but funny with jokes. <laughs> and it was animated. George paid for it out of his own pockets and he handed it to Disney and they put it on the shelf. And it's been almost a decade and these episodes have never been seen. 39 episodes. So in, in honor of this, at the 39th minute of every hour, we tell people to tweet at Disney Plus. <laughs> May the tours be with you. Because we need them to release the 49, the 39, sorry. Now that I've laid that right. right are we starting? 